I like the Brits. I do. I, I was a little disappointed in my recent trip to London to see them out woking the French, where nary a woke could be found. I was also reminded of a quote from one of my prior favorite entertainers that is, if anything, more true today than it was back when the song was written. But, but anyway, I should clarify, I, I, I like the normal Brits. They have a certain stoic toughness that I find appealing. But I could definitely do without the royals. We happened to be in London during the inauguration of King Charles. I find it to be pretty earnest and traditional. Now, now obviously, the man himself is a bit of a bumbling fool. But he seems harmless enough. And I give some credit to the old line royals like Queen Elizabeth and maybe, maybe, Prince William and Kate Middleton, who seem like they might be okay. But for every one of them, you seem to have a princess die the original royal victim, no redeeming qualities at all, and certainly no redeeming royal qualities. She was the pioneer, in my opinion, of the entire professional victim industry, which we are still stuck with to this day. And we also seem to be stuck with her loathsome child, Prince Harry, and his even more loathsome wife, third-rate actress, Meghan Markle. For those of you who have been living under a rock for the last couple of years, the Markles decided, in essence, to leave the royal family and move to Canada to pursue their own endeavors. With their own endeavors, as it turns out, meaning pretty much sitting around, doing nothing, and wanting to be paid just for being royals, which they no longer are. When you can be outworked by a former community organizer and his wife, you know you don't exactly have your nose to the grindstone. And then, to add insult to injury, Harry and Meghan have made a habit of complaining to anybody who would listen about the horrible invasions of privacy they're experiencing in America, while simultaneously doing everything possible to make all their affairs as public as possible. It's, it's incredible. Harry and Meghan have been roundly and deservedly mocked in the United States, even by the leftists who I'm sure they expected to be fawning over them 24-7. It came as a bit of a shock then recently when Princess Harry said he was considering becoming a U.S. citizen. The tone deafness of this couple can hardly be overstated. They've become a laughingstock ever since they arrived. And their next big strategic move is to try to become citizens of a country that thinks they're a joke. <laughs> Even in the woke mind virus capital of the world, New York City, people seem to realize that we have way too many entitled whining beta males. Here already, we don't need another one. That There is no way I could ever make it through Harry's book, Spare. But I do feel the need to point out that Harry actually is, is not a spare. That term would greatly exaggerate his actual importance. Princess Charlotte is a spare. Fourth in line, Archie is a spare spare. You don't even get to Harry until the fifth position. And by then, the word spare has been really rendered meaningless, just like its author. Just take a look at this book cover. It really says it all. Feel sorry for me. I'm such a horrible victim for being born into a position in life that most people would kill for. I'm not getting enough attention. I mean, not the kind of attention that I want. The kind of attention that affirms my victimhood just for being alive. Poor me. It's pathetic. Like many things in life, there's not, at least in my opinion, any particular problem with a monarchy in the way that it's practiced in Britain. It, it, but it's the same old story. It's not the monarchy. That's the problem. It's the monarchs. So Harry, give us a break. A little less whining, okay? Andrew, a little less, well, it, basically every single thing that you do. And Charles, <laughs> Charles, the weak and bumbling cousin that we all prop up and feel sorry for. Charles, just do the best you can until a real man comes along to take over for you, okay?